Hello friends, this is Growl. I've been lucky enough to get early access to the Dragonflight Alpha, and I'm here bringing my first impressions and thoughts on how Preservation Evoker is looking going into the War Within. Preservation is in an interesting spot. I feel like it was really fun on release at the beginning of Dragonflight. However, that may have been just favorable tuning, and then after some nerfs came in, we saw many people leave the spec and not many returned. While this might be caused by many reasons, especially the rise of augmentation, I do think there are still a lot of people who enjoy the spec and are hoping it sees some love coming into the next expansion. Although we're in an early build, I have to say, I think they absolutely nailed the changes to the class, and I'm really excited to see how it performs. I've only got limited experience testing it in some dungeons, but the hero talents they've added really add some needed depth, as well as boosting abilities that now feel really good to press. Evoker is sort of becoming the king of skill combinations and interactions, with empowered spells that have different effects and buff skills that follow, as well as the options obvious combo power with spells like Echo, Temporal Anomaly, and Stasis. I'd say it almost feels like a bit too much to juggle, but I'll leave that until things go live. The Hero Tree is the first obvious thing to look at, and it brings a ton of compelling choices and gameplay options. They really nailed the Hero Tree, boosting some of Preservation Evoker's weakest points, I think. The trees are very different, so I'm just going to look at them one by one. The Chrono Warden tree is the augmentation hybrid. It brings a really powerful sort of team buffing potential. For those who aren't a big fan of support classes and buffing DPS, you might want to look away here. At first glance, it doesn't seem too crazy. It buffs your tip to scales into a powerful 2 minute cooldown that stacks haste and CDR. The node following it though is where it gets really interesting. During this new cooldown that lasts for 20 seconds, whenever you cast an empowered spell, it buffs a nearby ally with a potential 15% healing or damage buff on their abilities, although it doesn't clarify the exact percent. This buff lasts 15 seconds and also gets slightly extended whenever you use essence spenders. This can end up like a giga group PI. I think it's going to be a huge buff to any class while they're in their cooldowns, especially with Bloodlust, and so I can see this doing so much damage if you combo things in a coordinated group. The other side of the tree gives you a new on-use ability in Gulf. This is a short cooldown instant cast ability, similar to Living Flame in that you can do damage with it or you can heal. The difference is that the effect is increased by each periodic effect on the target. At first glance, you don't really think Evoker has too many periodic effects, but you might be forgetting about Echo. Simply echoing a reversion on a target gives it three effects, with two copies of reversion, as well as a new passive hot that procs off of Echo from the tree. This gives you a really, really powerful counter to healing direct damage, something that Evoker needed desperately. Let's say someone takes damage, hopefully you already had Dream Breath on them, then you press Echo and then reversion them and it reverses 30% of the damage they just took, and then you give them a big engulf that is buffed by by 200% and it basically like immediately tops them. This thing was a massive spot heal during testing. It could also be used for a huge damage combo on a pack, like a really big flame breath, then you use your living flames that are split, then you disintegrate the priority target followed by an engulf. I felt like I was doing almost DPS levels of damage. It felt a lot like early Dragonflight Evoker, although definitely, you know, more complicated, not just pressing two buttons. The class tree is mostly untouched, and honestly I think that's for good reason. Unlike nearly every other spec in the game, Evoker's spec tree was made with the skill tree system in mind, since it was a new class in Dragonflight. It's really clean, it has lots of connections, it allows you to go for what you need, and honestly I don't really have complaints for it. If anything, I would say maybe get rid of some of the Emerald Blossom nodes on the right hand side, and instead make them like more general purpose healing nodes, since in some builds Emerald Blossom can feel really clunky to use. The spec tree did get some small changes, mainly focused on like the middle and bottom area. The strong DPS nodes have been removed from the middle of the tree, and they've been replaced with more general purpose nodes that were previously on the bottom, stuff like increased max essence and increased empowered level, as well as a new talent that does increased potency on spells that have essence burst used. I think this change makes sense overall. It makes room for a new capstone as well, Life Spark. Life Spark 
Spark is simply the Season 1 tier set from Dragonflight. It procs instant cast empowered living flames that are also boosted in healing and damage. I'm really happy to see this return since living flame sometimes can feel a little bit weak or maybe you may struggle not being able to hard cast it. The living flame procs followed by the option to take and golf if you really feel like you need the healing gives you a lot more options than what you had before. Since Evoker is a new class introduced in Dragonflight, it's hard for me to say what niche it should fill. Like, what does an Evoker-like tree even mean? I think we're definitely headed in the right direction, though, iterating on some of the cool interactions between abilities while also keeping some of the fun things that made Evoker feel unique, like Rewind and Rescue. I did get a chance to play Evoker in some early dungeons to test, and it felt really, really good. It's true that we aren't doing super high level content, so keep in mind with healers, you know, things that I say about the rotation and builds might not be true once you push a class to its limits. With the engulf build, I could constantly just dish out reversions and dream breaths over and over again. The hots would keep people topped, and then if someone took a spike in damage, I could just use engulf on them. I didn't feel the need to use living flame defense much or even spirit bloom much when they were in danger on the topic of spirit bloom i'm not sure if it was just a numbers thing but it really felt weaker i remember in dragonflight if i full channel the spirit bloom it would just like be a huge spike in all the hp bars in testing it felt like it was a lot weaker i'm not sure if it's just in my head or there was some sort of change when we were in danger it felt kind of like a liability to stop and fully empower it when i should just rather throw out reversions with ta or engulfs they would would sort of heal the same amount. With all the new power that Evoker is getting, I don't know if that will even be a big deal, or maybe all healers will start to feel like that. I definitely missed out on that short cooldown massive party heal though from early Dragonflight. It's hard to know exactly how much I was buffing my party using the Chrono Warden talents. I assume it's something that should be powerful in high level dungeons, otherwise it would, you know, just be really, really underwhelming. It did feel a little awkward to have to use my tip the scales immediately when my teammates are using their cooldowns at the start of the pull. Tip the scales is one of your few like oh crap buttons that you can use to quickly push health bars up and using it and then having to dump all of your empowered spells like right away, even if you don't need to just to get those party buffs up didn't really feel that great although i do like the trend of buffing current abilities instead of like bloating things with just adding tons of new keybinds i don't have a great solution maybe buff like a less important spell something like deep breath then it would sort of feel like a preservation evoker's uh, breath of eons i'm also a bit worried that once people figure out how impactful these buffs are people are really gonna cry and it's gonna get nerfed i think a lot of people don't really like the idea of buffing each other's damage simply because it creates an imbalance in raid oftentimes. Personally, I like the idea of supporting and buffing allies, especially in dungeons. I think it's more interesting than just doing the damage yourself, but hey, that's just me. One last thought is that Disintegrate, the essence spender for DPS, actually felt like a much better button to press when you were running the Flame Shaper Hero Talent Tree. It has such a cool animation, and the option to spend your essence on offense instead of defense should be more rewarding than it felt in Dragonflight. It was basically just like barely slightly better than Living Flame. The Disintegrate now is doing more damage and also leaves that damage over time effect for a potential engulf. On top of that, you have the talent that it returns your mana and you get more essence burst procs so you're continuously using it honestly during the entire play session i was sort of just like slamming all of my healing buttons and not really worrying about my mana just because i was pressing disintegrate often enough when i got those essence bursts i kind of almost always sat at full mana i don't know if it is a good thing but it definitely felt good Overall though, I felt like my damage contribution as well as my healing was more than enough, and Evoker is definitely looking like it's worth picking up going into the new expansion. Anyway, that wraps up my first impressions and overview of the changes to Preservation Evoker in The War Within. Thank you for watching, and I hope to cover a ton more content specifically around healers going into the new expansion, so if there's stuff that I missed or things that you want to see covered in that regard, definitely throw them in the comments. I'm also going to try and keep the mage videos up too once this uh, alpha blitz finishes, so there's that. Happy healing, friends.